it's time for another amazing chemistry video with Mr. Stapleton! Proudly sponsored by Farmer Junior Nice Coffee. Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking all about acid rain. Okay. Um, acid rain, if you don't know, is defined as any rain with a pH below 5.6. Okay. So, what we mean by that and why we specify that it's below 5.6 is because all rain is naturally acidic. Okay? So in the air, one of the most common gases we've got is carbon dioxide. Okay? When that dissolves in water, falls to the ground, we actually get carbonic acid, H2CO3. Okay? Carbonic acid is a weak acid. Okay? What that means is Remember, all acids are made up of hydrogen ions, H+. That means when it actually dissolves in water, which looks a little bit like this, and I'll do it in a different colour, um, when it dissolves in water, all right, you actually end up with this, H+, and carbonate ions. Okay. However, it's very, very weak, so we only get a small amount of the, the H+, and we still get mostly the H2CO3. So because we've got a low concentration of H+, it doesn't affect the pH. Well, you ask how does it actually calculate the pH using the H+, well, I'm glad you asked, that's a very good question. So I'm going to show you. And I'll start off by just showing the very, very basic calculation for pH. So pH is the negative log of the concentration of our hydrogen ions. Sometimes you'll see that as h 3 O plus as well. Doesn't matter, it's exactly the same thing. When you've got hydrogen ions H plus dissolved in water, you'll end up with hydronium ions H3O, H3O plus. So you can use them interchangeably. So, what that means um, is we can calculate what pH our solution is going to be, okay, if we actually have um, the concentration of H plus. So, if we have, um, let's say, a hydrochloric acid solution, okay, and we have that as 0.05 molar, okay, that's the same as 0 0.05 moles per litre, okay. So, what's that telling us is that inside a HCl molecule, one HCl molecule, we have H plus ions, and we have Cl minus ions, so we have hydrogen ions, and we have chloride ions, okay? What this is telling us is that we have 0.05 hydrogen ions, or moles of hydrogen ions in every litre, and we have 0.05 moles of chlorine ions in every litre, okay? So, we can use this concentration right here to calculate our pH, all right? So I'm gonna get rid of the chlorine because it doesn't really matter there. So, if we look at calculating our pH, it's the negative log concentration of our H+. So, it's negative log 0 0.05. Put that in your calculator, and you're going to get the pH. So, that's going to give us a, a pH of 1.3. Okay? So... That's how we calculate H+, plus, okay? And the higher the concentration of hydrogen ions you have, the lower your pH is going to be, okay? So let me show you another example. I'm going to leave that up the top there, okay? So if we do um, this time some hydrochloric acid, okay, that has a concentration of 0. Point um, 0.85 moles per litre, okay, our concentration of H plus is 0 0.85, so our pH is negative log 0 0.85, which is 0.5, gives us a pH in theory of 0.07. Okay, so you can see as we through 
three, two, one. Okay, so if we have some hydrochloric acid this time, which has a concentration of 0 0.085 moles per litre, so we're increasing it from 0.05 to 0.085, our pH is our negative log of 0 0.085, so that gives us a pH of negative log 0 0.085, okay, 1.07. Okay. No units for pH, but you can see that by increasing the concentration of H+, we've got more hydrogen ions in there, which lowers our pH. Which makes sense, therefore, that um, because carbonic acid is a very weak acid, all right, it doesn't give a lot of H+, it doesn't lower the pH to below 5.6, which is our definition for acid rain. But what happens if we have a what we call diprotic or triprotic acid? So we're going to look at sulfuric acid here, H2SO4, and I'm going to go with a concentration of 0 0.001 moles per litre. Now what you've got to remember is that in one molecule of that, we've actually got two hydrogen atoms this time. So that means that the concentration of hydrogen in this case is actually going to be two lots, because we've got two hydrogens in there, lots of 0 0.001. So we're actually going to have a concentration of 0 0.002 moles per litre. So if we do pH equals negative log 0 0.002, all right, negative log 0 0.002, we get a pH of 2.7. Okay. If we had H3, there would be three hydrogens, and we would triple it here, okay? So you've just got to take into account how many hydrogens are in one molecule, okay? And then you need to multiply the concentration by the number of hydrogen atoms you've got in there, okay? Now, how do you go backwards, okay? So if you've got a pH, okay, so let's go with a pH of... 5.6, how do you go backwards to be able to work out what concentration of H plus ions do you need in order to start making an acid rain? Okay, well, all you got to do is rearrange this equation, okay, and the opposite of negative log is 10 to the power of, okay, so if you want to calculate your concentration of H plus, all right, you must do 10 to your negative pH, okay. So the concentration of H plus is going to be 10 to the negative 5.6. So if you put that in your calculator, okay, 10 to the power of negative 5.6, okay, we're going to end up with 2.51 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6 moles per litre. Okay, you must put your units in here for concentration for H+. pH didn't have units, but concentration does. So if you want to go backwards and work out concentration of H+, you go 10 to the negative pH. Alright. Well, what happens if you've got a base? Okay, how can you actually calculate the pH if you've got a base? Well, there's two, um, what you do is you bring in a second equation. Okay. So what you end up with is this, POH equals negative log concentration of hydroxide ions, okay? And then you combine that with this equation, all right? pH plus POH is equal to 14, all right? That's where we get our pH scale from. So if you can remember these three equations, all right, I'll show you what that actually means. So let's say we've got some sodium hydroxide, concentration of 0 0.005 moles per litre, our pOH is negative log 0 0.000, oop, too many zeros, sorry, 0 0.005, putting that in our calculator, negative log 0 0.005, so we've got a, P, um, a pOH, of 2.3, okay, so our pH 
if we rearrange this, all right, here is 14 minus pOH, all right, just rearranging that equation. So it's 14 minus 2.3. So our pH is 11.7. And so if you've got a base, you can also calculate the pH. Okay. So and you can also go backwards from that, calculate the concentration of hydroxide ions as well. Okay. And um, <coughs> it's pretty straightforward. So just practice it, learn these three equations. All right. Remember them, and you can do any sort of calculations with it. So back to acid rain. Definition, rain with a pH below 5.6, okay? Now, why is acid rain bad? Um, three main reasons, okay? And I'll write, keep them across the top here. So number one, corrodes metals, okay? Apologies for my dogs tonight, they're a bit crazy. They corrode metals. So metals, um, and we're talking about building structures, things like that, they have iron in it. So whether it's iron, pure iron or steel, steel is just a mixture of iron and carbon. So Iron plus acid, acid rain, gives us, all right, in this case, ferrous ions and hydrogen gas. It's just a straight metal acid reaction. Balance it up with the two there. Okay, so it corrodes these structures, makes them um, soluble, okay, and so over time the metal corrodes and needs to be replaced. So that's a bad thing. Number two, it um, destroys marble statues. Marble is um, calcium carbonate, okay? So a carbonate plus an acid actually gives you mobile calcium ions, water, and carbon dioxide, just a straightforward carbonate-acid reaction, again, balancing it with the two there. So marble statues, particularly in places like um, Europe, where they've got a very high population density, which means a lot of pollution is going up into the air, okay? Um, acid rain can actually destroy these marble statues. Okay, the third one, which I'm going to in a little bit more detail later, is called leaching of toxic cations. Okay, and particularly we're going to be looking at aluminium, all right, aluminium ions there. Okay, so acid rain is bad for the environment. So how does the acid rain actually form? Well, remember it needs to be a pH of below 5.6. I've said that enough times now. If you get that wrong, I'll kill you. All right, a pH below 5.6. Okay, so we need something with, that makes a strong acid. So in the atmosphere, these pollutants, sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, nitrogen dioxide, okay? All three of those gases can form very, very strong acids. So I'll show you how. Sulfur dioxide and water gives us sulfurous acid, okay? Sulfurous acid. All right, if we do sulfur trioxide and water, we can get sulfuric acid, okay? Sulfuric. And this is one of the equations you're going to practice a lot and hopefully get. Nitrogen dioxide plus water gives you nitric acid plus nitric oxide, okay? Balance it up, three there, two there, okay? So all three of these, okay? Sulfurous acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid are all strong acids, which means they give a lot of H plus ions when they're in solution, okay? That therefore means you're gonna have a very, very low pH below 5.6, which is acid rain. So I mentioned the leaching of cations, and I'm going to finish on this because this is the real major issue. Okay, um, in the soil you've got aluminium oxide. Okay, aluminium is a very reactive metal, so it likes to be in a combined form. Okay, that's quite stable. But when you introduce hydrogen ions, okay, you get what's called a cation displacement. So this is where one positive ion takes the place of another one. So in here you've got aluminium ions, all right, positive aluminium ions. You got bring in hydrogen ions, and you actually make these aluminium ions mobile, okay? And you get water as a result of this. Balance it up with a six there and a three there, okay? These mobile aluminium ions are taken up, okay, by plants. Okay, get to see my cool drawing skills today. Taken up by plants. Now. What that means is that plants normally need aluminium in a very small amount, which is a trace amount. High amounts of aluminium are actually toxic to plants, which kill them off. 
Okay, equals dead plants. Okay, so though that's not a good thing. All right, we don't want to have all our plants being killed off. So um, in Chile, South America, um, for example, this is where it was really first discovered. Um, lots of their forest was dying because of acid rain, um, and they're finding that. Um, these toxic cations, like aluminium, which are being released into the soil, are really bad to the, um, for the plants. The other issue um, with hydrogen ions that are falling as well is obviously that they acidify lakes. Okay, when you acidify lakes, you kill off the fish. Okay, um, it's really bad. It um, removes protective layers on their skin. You can get things like fin rot. Um, so if you've ever had a, um, a fish tank at home and you see that the, the tail of the fish starts to kind of disintegrate, that means your water's too acidic, so you need to fix it up as well. Fish are very, very sensitive to changes in pH. So again, acidifying lakes or waterways um, will destroy um, the water life there as well. So that's acid rain. pH below 5.6 caused by oxides of nitrogen and sulfur in the air. They make very, very strong acids, lower the pH. All right. They destroy marble statues, they corrode metal structures, and they release toxic cations from the, um, from the soil and acidify waterways. Okay. Very, very bad. How we can combat them is just by um, stopping the pollutants going up into the air. Okay, so very simply, what you'll find in most industries, okay, that uh, might produce these toxic cations, uh, sorry, these toxic gases, you've got these big smokestacks that they're supposed to have. All right, so you've got your oxides of sulfur, okay, and your nitrogen, and they go up the stack here, and they have little things in here that are called scrubbers. Okay. Scrubbers remove these harmful um, oxides before they get into the atmosphere, so we have no acid rain coming out. That's the theory. Okay, um, depends what country you're in as to how tightly that is monitored and the amount of gas um, of these pollutants you can actually put into the atmosphere. But that's the idea. All right. So hopefully that's all been helpful. Uh, any questions? Just ask me. Thanks, guys.